left it there with our base painting, um, our underlayers. I didn't put um, anything down, so where I've been blowing the dust dust away, it has got a little bit pigment dusty up around the top there, so I will clean that off with a putty rubber, a putty eraser, um, just to lift that away. Um, but just be aware of that, that when you're blowing your pigment away, it is going up into that area and contaminating it a little bit. But now we are on to our kind of favourite bit, this is the magic bit, um, but it's also the scary bit for some. So I've got my piece of glassine still, I'm going to keep that under my hand as I work my way down. I'm going to work top left down to bottom right. I've got some kitchen, like tissue paper, roll paper, off to one side, just a couple of pieces. And then I've got what's called a water brush, Japanese water brush. This is a Pentel Aquash. I like the Pentel ones, um, and I've got quite a, this is a medium one, medium nib on it. You get different size nibs, this is a medium nib. You don't have to use one of these, if you want to use a paintbrush, you can just pull in a brush, a um, watercolour brush, any brush really. Um, not too big, not too small, you want something that's kind of a decent size but not too big that's going to get away with you. The be beauty of these is basically what you want to do, this is the method, you want to squeeze your water through and you want, you don't, don't dab it off onto your paper because that means you've just released all the water into the paper and it's not in the nib. You need to squeeze it so that you've got that nib full of water before you go in. Then you do a little area, I tend to do a little block, come over here, squeeze, clean off my pigment, give it a little wipe and then squeeze again to load the water back into my nib. I've got a little pot of water here as well in case I get a dark area that I just want to rinse it off into the clean water in a pot rather than keeping squeezing through um, my water in. So I'll show you there, I'm, I'm pretty much full on the barrel of the water. So I'll put my paper off to one side. And then it's a case of we do this all in one go. If you're going to do it in sections, just do a section. Because otherwise when you come in again with water it will bleed and that's what I call the cauliflower effect. And that's what you don't want. Now I, I tend, tend to do my, my light, light areas first, but I'm going to do this in sequence and just do blocks. Um, and then work our way down so it's nice and logical for you guys otherwise I'll be all over the place so everything's in place I'll try and leave that I don't want it coming through onto my paper that's all let me just see if I can put that to one side and then you can see what I'm doing off to one side as well there you go that's better right so I'm going to come in on this top here first um, I've squeezed through there you go that is fully loaded I'm going to keep my reference photo to one side as well, just so I know I'm following it. And then this is where the magic happens. And don't be scared. What you want to do is not go out over the edge. And I tend to wiggle it a little bit in places just to make sure that I'm getting all that pigment down into the pastel matte tooth. Now you don't want to go dragging it around too much, so I just went in there over the dark, sorry, the light bits first, and now I'm just coming in over the dark patches. And remember, all you're doing by adding water, see how bright that is instantly, is you're coming in, um, I've just rinsed that off in the little tub of water, and I'll squeeze some fresh through. So all, all I want to do is dissolve the binder. I'm not trying to move the pigment around, I just want to dissolve the binder so it sinks down. It's like, act some people call it activating your watercolour pencils. So you don't want too much, it doesn't matter, it, as long as you just don't let it bleed out into the surrounding areas, then that's fine. So you go, that's both ears done and look how vibrant they are already squeeze a little bit more through. Okay, so I'm going to leave the main, I'm going to come down here and this is where you'll see the evidence of all of the lovely colours and layers that we put together. It's all going to come together now. So I'm trying to do it in blocks and it's kind of doing it in blocks of where I put the colour down as well. So I don't want to be dragging areas of pigment out into other areas. So we spent all that time, like I say, laying it down beautifully. 
I don't want to be dragging the lights into the darks. Okay. So a little bit of water goes a long way. I'm just going to add a little touch in there to the eye. Clean that off because I've got black on there now. All right, top edge around here, and this will soften as well. As it dries, it'll come out quite vibrant now. But as it dries, it'll dry very a lot paler than it's coming out. So don't panic if it looks really vibrant. Um, it's going to be a lot softer, almost pastel when it dries. Taking a little bit more care than I probably normally would. <laughs> okay. Load up my gun. I am um, nib again. What you don't want to do is like that. Let that line dry before you come and do the bit next to it. You need to keep this going now. That's all mixing and blending so nicely. when I do workshops with this method and I walk around and by the time I've come back round to someone it can be like about half an hour or so and I've got no idea sometimes what they've gone and put down in between me sort of coming around the first time I'm going to come into this area and just going to make this bleed in a little bit before it's too dry and then it will just soften that area as well so all we've got in here remember is a little bit of white pigment but it'll just bleed into that blaze nicely and soften it yeah so I can come around and it's not until they add the water that I can then it then kind of reveals really what they put down um, they could have snuck you know a green in there blues, anything really, and it's not until we add the water. It almost tells the truth then of what pigments you've got down, because obviously everything then comes to the surface, because this makes it just so vibrant. So literally I'm just keeping it moving around there, and just doing that little dark bit last. Okay. Clean off my brush in there. So we're going to move down now. Have I got enough in there? Yeah, I think so. So let's come down to this top edge. The neck. A little bit of back and forth. I'm kind of keeping it in the direction the fur as well, the fur, the hair, I always say fur, it's the hair, but I'm trying to do it in sections as well, so we'll do this section and then we'll come up, we'll come forward to the next section, so a little bit of purple, that mauve has made a lovely difference in there. Now these I'm going to come down here in like the lines. I don't want to move anything around, I just want it to dissolve that binder. And it's beautiful.
clean off and we'll come forward onto the next section. Try not to take it out over that edge. looking lovely. Okay, so forward to the next section. Clean off. Squeeze through. So I'm going to come in here so it'll keep this area nice and light. So make sure you come in there with a nice clean brush. Okay. So now I'm going to come down to this lighter area first and kind of work our way outward from it. trying to, um, if you had a bigger brush there, bigger for the bigger area, you could just literally sweep down like that and then back up again. I'm just having to wiggle it a little bit just to make sure. Okay, water into all of those areas. But instantly softening. as you come up around that edge. We don't want it bleeding out into the area next to it if we can help it. And you see that lovely mauve and the sanguine now coming to life as we come up around there. Okay, so all this light area. Okay, and then just last few sweeps. And then we can go on and just get that mane done. As you can see, it's all blended out there really softly. But that's absolutely fine. Because remember, this is the underpainting and that's all we're creating. Okay. So I'm just going to come up now and just do the main. And the same principle here, I'm going to do the lighter areas first. So we've got some areas that have got like bits of grey in. So let's come in and just tackle the outside edge first. And then come into the darks. Okay. Squeeze some more water through. So some lovely soft areas there. Just. Okay, so it's picking up some pigment now. So come into the darker areas now before we clean off and come into that last light area. You can see the beautiful, the, the French grey could put tiny touches I could put more some violet that we put through there as well it's all coming through as we add the water and it's supposed to be blocky remember we've color blocked we're not looking for refinement that will come with the 
dry pencils. But like I say, you can take this really painterly if you want. Um, you don't have to go in with dry pencils, apart from maybe for a little bit of detail. So I'm just coming here with some quite clean water, just softening those edges. Okay, the same just up around this top edge. I'm just coming in with clean water and just pushing that pigment out a little bit um, just so it's not a harsh edge. Really softens it up. I like watercolour, really. A little bit more just around there. really soften that back. Now if you wanted to now, let's, let's say at this point that you've lost any of your richness or your highlights or your darks, whilst this is damp is when you can come in again with your pigments. Now there's nothing really that I feel like I'm missing too much of. Let's get my reference back. Um, so I want to show you. Okay I'll come in with Okay, the warm grey one. So here I can see that it's usually your lights that you lose a little bit here with this. Um, I'm coming with the white as well. Just do a little touch of the blue. So let me just grab those. There's the whites and the sky blue. I just want to show you this for example. So I'm not going to come onto this area yet because this is quite um, damp still. So let's come into an area that we did quite early on just to demonstrate this for you. So here is the warm grey one. And what you want to do is come in on an area, wiggle. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. No, it's not showing up well enough there for you. So let's come in up here and see. What you want is a damp area with a flat edge of one of these pencils. And you should be able to come in and just release pure pigment because the dampness is enough to um, dissolve the binder and allow you to come in. I've got a feeling this is drying a little bit quick today. Yeah, it's starting to grab it a little bit, but I don't think it's enough to be showing you. It does depend. Yeah, that's dried already. So if that was damp, it's really warm here today. If that was damp, it's grabbing it a little bit here where there's a bit more, more water. It will release pure pigment down through there. This is a great opportunity just to get a little bit more pigment down. Let's try this area. Yeah, this is a little bit damp over here. It might work a little bit better over here. So you just want a nice flat side of your pencil. Come in. I've got hardly any pressure whatsoever going down on here now. But that dampness should be just enough to grab some of this pigment. Yeah, it's even drying. A little bit too dry here. I know I've demonstrated it on other pieces before. Just grabbing it a little bit there. But as I say, you can come in at this point and just pop back in any of the pigment, lights, darks, brights that you might have lost by adding the water. It's usually your lights that go, I call it wishy-washy, so quite washed out, quite pale. But you don't want to come in and just start, you don't want to come in when it's wet because your water, um, your pencils will literally just cut through the water. And once it's too dry, this is just getting to the point now where it's just too dry to accept anything. I think that's just the fact that it's it's warm in here today. Um, and it's just not. Let's try through this main where we've just been. It's a little bit too damp there. So you want somewhere just in between. So 
no pressure whatsoever. There we go, it's starting to release there beautifully. It's really softening that up, that's nice. And let's say it just gives us that chance to get a little bit more extra pigment in. Here it's creating a lovely softness. Let's see if I can do it up over here. It feels a little bit too damp. It's working really nicely. So let's just really soften that area up there really nicely. Let's see if we can get a bit more over here. really has created something really lovely and soft there. So that is our water added. Um, the tissue. Just coming back into this edge here. Just softening that edge a little bit. And it will bleed into that main, into that blaze now. But that's fine. So time now, you must at this point, this is when you must walk away from it. Even though it's drying to my touch, it's not dry underneath. Remember that pastel matte is a, um, it's like cork, it's, it's a cellulose fibre like cork and it is sprayed onto the backing sheet um, to create this surface. Now the water might, the dampness might appear to be drying on the surface but underneath it is still damp. Um, so if I try to go in with pencils, people have tried this method before and they've come back, back to me and they've said I can't get my pencil to go down, it's just um, scratching on the surface and it's sliding off and it's slipping and I'll say have you allowed your paper to dry overnight and they've gone no, just a couple of hours and even though today it's lovely and warm I could probably take it outside and it would dry out a lot quicker it's much better to get into the habit of walking away from it now and coming back to it tomorrow um, before you start again and then you will know it is definitely, definitely, definitely dry. Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. You can see all the beautiful reds, all those colours, the Kaput Mortems, the ochres, everything. Look at that beautiful colour shining up on that face, the lovely shadows in here. It's just giving it such beautiful form already. Um, and that's just one of yeah, just a couple of layers really, our initial underpainting. So I hope you've enjoyed that part, and we will move on to our dry layers on the next section. Okay, thank you much, very much for watching this part, and I shall see you all on the next one.